Hello, everybody. This is Arnold in my house in Newark, reading you the last chapter of the Winnie the Pooh book. But don't worry, there'll be no more books after this. Say hello to my friend Pooh Bear. Hello, Pooh Bear. Hello. So it's chapter 10, in which Christopher Robin gives a party, and we say goodbye. One day, when the sun had come back over the forest, bringing with it the scent of May, and all the streams of the forest were tinkling happily to find themselves their own pretty shape again, and the little pools lay dreaming of the life they had seen and in big things they had done, in the warmth and the quiet of the forest, the cuckoo was trying over his voice carefully and listening to see if he liked it. And the wood pigeons were complaining gently to themselves in their lazy, comfortable way that it was the other fellow's fault. But it didn't matter very much. On such a day as this, Christopher Robin whistled in a special way he had. An owl came flying out of the hundred acre wood to see what he wanted. Owl, said Christopher Robin, I'm going to give a party. And there's Christopher Robin looking up at Owl in his tree. You are, are you? said Owl. And it's to be a special sort of party. Of course, it's because of Pooh, what Pooh did, when he did it, and what he did to save Piglet from the flood. Oh, that's what it's for, is it? said Al. Yes, so we tell Pooh as quickly as you can, and all the others, of course, will be tomorrow. Al tried to think of something wise to say, but he couldn't, so he flew off to tell the others, and the first person he told was Pooh. Pooh, Christopher Robin is giving a party. Oh, said Pooh. Then seeing that Owl expected to say something else, he said, Where'll they be? Little cakes with pink sugar icing? Owl felt it was rather beneath him to talk about little cake things with pink sugar icing. So he told Pooh exactly what Christopher Robin had said and flew off to Eeyore. A party for me? Pooh thought to himself, How grand! began to wonder if all the other animals would know no, it was a special poo party and if Christopher Robin had told them about the flowing river and the brain of poo and all the wonderful things that he invented and sailed on and began to think how awful it would be if everyone had forgotten about it and nobody quite knew what the party was for and the more he thought or the party got muddled up in his mind. Like a dream, when nothing goes right. And there's Pooh looking himself in the mirror. And the dream began to sing itself over his head until it became a sort of song. It was an anxious Pooh song. Three cheers for Pooh. For who? For Pooh. Why, what did he do? I thought you knew. He saved a friend from wedding. Three cheers for Pooh. For where? For Bear. He couldn't swim, but he rescued him. He rescued who? Oh, listen, do. I'm talking of Pooh. Of who? Of Pooh. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. Well, who was a bear of enormous brain? Just say it again. Of enormous brain. Of enormous what? Well, he ate a lot, but I don't know if he could swim or not, but he managed to float on a sort of a boat. On a sort of a what? Well, a sort of pot. So now let's give him three hearty cheers. Now let's give him three hearty witches and hope he'll be with us for years and years and grow in health and wisdom and riches. Three cheers for Pooh. For who? For Pooh. Three cheers for Pooh. For where? For Bear. 
Three cheers for the wonderful Winnie the Pooh. Just tell somebody, what did he do? While all this was going on inside him, Al was talking to Eeyore. Eeyore, Christopher Robin is giving a party, said Al. Very interesting, said Eeyore. I suppose they'll be sending me down the odd bits which got trodden on. Kind and thoughtful. Not at all. Don't mention it. And there's Eeyore. There's Owl. And there's Piglet. There's an invitation for you. What's that like? An invitation. Yes, I heard you. Who dropped it? This isn't anything to eat. He's asking you to a party tomorrow. Eeyore shook his head slowly. You mean Piglet, the little fellow with excited ears. That's Piglet. I'll tell him. No, no, said Owl, getting quite fussy. It's you. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Christopher Robin said, all of them, tell all of them. All of them except Eeyore. All of them, said Al sulkily. Oh, said Eeyore. A mistake, no doubt. But still, I shall come. Only don't blame me if it rains. But it didn't rain. Christopher Robin had made a long table out of long pieces of wood. And they sat around it. Christopher Robin sat at one end and Pooh at the other. And between them on one side were Owl, Eeyore, and Piglet. And between them on the other side were Rabbit and Roo and Kanga. And all of Rabbit's friends and relations spread themselves about on the grass and waited hopefully in case anybody spoke to them or dropped anything or asked them the time. It was the first party to which Roo had ever been. And it was very exciting. As soon as ever they sat down, he began to talk. Hello, Pooh, he squealed. Hello, Roo, said Pooh, who jumped up and down in his seat for a little while and began again. Hello, Piglet. Piglet waved a paw, being too busy to say anything. Hello, Eeyore. Eeyore nodded gloomily at him. It will rain soon. You'll see if it doesn't. Rude looked to see if, if it did, didn't, and it didn't. So he said, hello, Owl. And Owl said, hello, my little fellow, in a kindly way. And went on telling Christopher Robin about an accident, which had nearly happened to a friend of his, whom Christopher Robin didn't know. And Kanga said to Roo, drink your milk, dear. Drink your milk first, dear, and talk afterwards. So Rue, who was drinking his milk, tried to say that he could do both at once and had to be patted on the back and dried for quite a long time afterwards. And there's Kanga patting Roo on the back because Roo couldn't drink his milk and talk at the same time. And so I think his milk just went spilling all over him. When they all had nearly eaten enough, Christopher Robin banged on the table with his spoon. And everybody stopped talking very silent, except Rue, who was just finishing a loud attack of hiccups uh, and trying to look as if he was one of Rabbit's relations. This party, said Christopher Robin, is a party cause what somebody did, and we all knew who that was, and it's his party cause what he did, and I got a present for him, and here it is. Then he felt the back around a little bit and whispered, where is it? Friends, he said, including Ottomans, it is a great pleasure, or perhaps I'd better say it has been a pleasure so far to see you at my party. What I did was nothing. Any of you except Rabbit and Owl and Kengo would have done the same. Owen Pooh, my remarks, of course, apply 
to Piglet and Rue because they were too small. Any of you would have done the same, but just happened to be me. It was not, I need hardly say, with an idea of Grit and Christopher Robin, what Christopher Robin is looking for now. And he put his front leg to his mouth and said in a loud whisper, try under the table. Then I did what I did because I feel that we should all do what we can to help. I feel that we should all... Oh, said Rue accidentally. Rue, dear, said Kanga reproachfully. Was it me? asked Rue, a little surprised. What's you talking about? Piglet whispered to Pooh. I don't know, said Pooh rather dolefully. I thought this was your party. And there they are at the party. And there's Pooh at one end and Christopher Robin at the other end. And they're all wondering, why is Eeyore talking about him, the party being for him, when the party should be being for Pooh. I thought it was once, but I suppose it isn't. I soon it was yours, then yours, said Piglet. So what I said, Pooh, <gasps> said Rue again. As I was saying, said Eeyore loudly and sternly, as I was saying, when I was interrupted by various sounds, I feel that... Here he is, cried Christopher Romney slightly. Pass it down to silly old Pooh, for it's for Pooh. Pooh, Pooh, said Eeyore. Of course it is, the best bear in the world. Here he is. I might have known, said Eeyore. After all, I can't complain. I have my friends. Somebody spoke to me only yesterday. And it was last week or the week before that Rob Rabbit bumped into me and said, Bother, the social round, always something going on. Nobody was listening, for they were all saying, Open it up, Pooh. What is it, Pooh? I know what it is. No, you don't. And the other remarks of all sorts. And there they all are, around Pooh, who got his present from Christopher Robin. And of course, Pooh was opening up as quickly as ever he could, but without cutting the string. Of course, you never know when a piece of string might be useful. At last, it was undone. When Pooh saw what it was, he nearly fell down. He was so pleased. It was a special pencil case. There were pencils in it marked B for bear, and pencils marked HB for helping bear, and pencils marked BB for brave bear. There was a knife for sharpening the pencils, and an India rubber for rubbing out anything you spelt wrong, and a ruler for ruling lines for words to walk on, and inches marked on the ruler, in case you want to know how many inches anything was, and blue pencils, and red pencils, and green pencils, for saying special things in blue, and red, and green. And all those lovely things were in little pockets of their own in a special case which shut with a click when you clicked it. And they were all for Pooh. Oh, said Pooh. Oh, Pooh, said everyone, except Eeyore. Thank you, growled Pooh. But Eeyore was saying to himself, this writing business, pencils and whatnot, Overrated, if you ask me. Silly stuff. Nothing to it. Later on, when they had all said goodbye and thank you to Christopher Robin, 
Screw and piglet long home thoughtfully together. In the golden evening, and for a long time they were silent. When you wake up in the morning, Pooh, said Piglet at last, what's the first thing you say to yourself? What's for breakfast? What do you say, Piglet? I say, wonder what's gonna happen exciting today, said Piglet. And there's Pooh and Piglet walking together. Pooh nodded thoughtfully. It's the same thing. And when did that happen? Asked Christopher Robin. When? Next morning? I don't know. Could you think and tell me and prove sometime? If you wanted it very much. Pooh does, said Christopher Robin. He gave a deep sigh, picked his bear up by the leg, and walked off to the door, trailing Winnie the Pooh behind him. At the door, he turned and said, Come in and see me have my bath. I might, I said. Was Pooh's pencil case any better than mine? It was just the same, I said. He nodded and went out. And in a moment, I heard Winnie the Pooh, bump, 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 going up the stairs behind him. And there's Christopher Robin taking Winnie the Pooh up the stairs behind him. And because he's dragging him, he's going bump, bump, bump. And that is the end of chapter 10 in which we say goodbye. Say goodbye. It's been a pleasure reading Winnie the Pooh book to all of you. And next week, I'll come back with another story. Have a great week, everybody. Hello everyone, my name is Ayola White and I am a reference librarian at the Newark Public Library. I am trying out a different setup today as I read this children's book which is called Africa Dream and it's by Eloise Greenfield and illustrated by Carol Byard. The dedication, with love to all children of African descent, may they find in their past the strength to shape their future. I went all the way to Africa in a dream one night. I crossed over the ocean in a slow, smooth jump. And landed in Africa, long ago Africa. I went to the city and shopped in the marketplace for pearls and perfume. With magic eyes, I read strange words in old books and understood. I leaned small against tall stone buildings. and rode through the crowds on a donkey's back. I dreamed I went to Africa, long ago Africa. I went to the village and stood lonesome still. Till my long ago granddad, with my daddy's face, stretched out his arms and welcomed me home. He knelt on one knee and planted one seed that grew into ten small trees, sorry, ten tall trees with mangoes for me.
I danced a hello dance to the drums of my uncles. And sang a hello song in a circle with new old friends. walked with my cousins all over Africa, lifting my long dress to step across countries. And when I got tired, I turned into a baby and my long ago grandma with mama's face held me in her arms and rocked me rocked me to sleep. And that's the end. Hope you all enjoyed this story, Africa Dream by Eloise Greenfield. And have a nice day. Goodbye.